Hey everybody, on this episode of the GH Report, we're getting up close and personal with Peter August himself. That's right, Wes Ramsey's in studio. We're going to talk to him next. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey everybody, welcome to a special Tuesday edition of the GH Report. This is the show where we, we like to talk about all the goings on in Port Charles, but today we're doing something a little special. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Frank Moran. And I am your co-host, Carla Renata. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you saw in the wide shot, we've got an incredible guest right here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's not That's like right. we can hide him. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, an incredible a actor. Cloth over you for a second. He's known what he's wanted to do since the age of 12. He's been in such shows as Grey's Anatomy, Code Black, The Event, The Mentalist, and more. His latest film is Perception. It's going to be out in the uh, 2019, currently touring the festival circuit. But for GH report purposes, you may know him best as Peter August. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Wes Ramsey. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys. Thanks so much for having me on today. Pleasure is all ours. Yes. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about all, all things P uh, Wes Ramsey. Perfect. Yes. So, I, yeah, I, I've done my research. <laughs> there you go. You, this would be something you should know a bit about. So, from Louisville, Kentucky, originally. Correct. Yes. Uh, so, and and uh, you're the middle of three brothers. I am. Yeah. So, uh, what was it? Because I was reading up about you and said, like, the age of twelve, when you when you uh, took a uh, some classes, you realized, like, oh, hey, this is what I want to do when you were performing in theater. Yes, it, I was. I was bit by the theater bug at an early age, and. Um, was fortunate to have a loving and supportive family that uh, sort of, you know, allowed me to, you know, sow my creative oats in the theater and uh, get on stage and, and do what I love to do. And, and somewhere along the way, early on, uh, I think I discovered and, and my family sort of saw it too, that, hey, you know, he's, he's onto something here. It seems like he's a natural. And um, so I sort of in that moment decided, I think before most kids should really know what they're going to spend their life doing, I pretty much quit all sports and changed everything so that I could um, fully uh, submerge myself in the world of uh, imaginary make-believe on stage. <laughs> yeah. Did either of your brothers get bit by the acting bug? No, uh, I, you know, I come from a creative family and uh, my older brother uh, was an accomplished uh, guitarist for many years. My younger brother is uh, quite an incredible visual illustrator and I, I feel like, you know, we, we all had our understanding of, you know, uh, Sure, we love to be outdoors, we're athletic, but, you know, creatively, we all found different ways to express ourselves artistically. Very nice. You yeah. seem to, based on your resume that, that I looked at very yeah. briefly, oh, yeah. <laughs> it seems like you gravitate more toward dramatic pieces as opposed to comedy. Do you have any inclination or desire to do comedy? You know, I love comedy. Um, I respect uh, comedy a great deal. Uh, comedy is very difficult to do and do well, and um, and I admire the people that do it. I love it, and I have had uh, some success with it, and I certainly love to make my friends laugh, and, I, and I'm a total goof, uh, you know, when uh, the cameras are not rolling. Um, How do you make your friends laugh? What do you do? Well, I like to think of myself as witty. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I like to right. think of myself as witty. And, uh, and, I, and I know that I'm not afraid, you know, this comes from being, you know, from clown class and whatnot in theater school and growing up on stage, that I'm just not afraid to, you know, to make a fool out of myself and, and you know, and, and to allow myself to be laughed at if it allows everyone else to be entertained. And I think a lot of people aren't comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for sure, ever since I was very young, I, I have always gravitated to uh, the dramatics. My mom called, called me her, her serious child. <laughs> you are very, you know, I have to say that I'm so glad you said that, because you are very serious. I'm actually yeah. kind of surprised. Yeah. You're very, you know, very serious and very buttoned up and pulled up. I'm going to need you to loosen up, honey. <laughs> you okay. had the GH right. report. Right. I don't mean take clothes off, now, but, yeah, but, you know, just loosen up a little bit. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the after buzz, after after buzz. That's right. <laughs> so, Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> you attend Juilliard. Uh, I did. Was uh, what you were expecting Juilliard, was that what you got when you first got there, or was it like even more intense than you were expecting and you need to really step your game up? Juilliard was, was an incredible, magical experience. It was four of the best years of my life. Uh, I think that after uh, spending seven, eight years, um, you know, in, in, in my hometown, very serious about my acting, uh, I was graduating high school and it seemed like the perfect next step for me. Uh, I wouldn't say that for, for most people coming out of high school, that a conservatory life would be the life for them. It's it's all day, every day, 9 a.m. till 11 p.m., Monday through Friday, and five hours on Saturday. So you don't really have a life. Um, 
you're further submerged in, in the world of whatever craft you're, you're studying, if it's dance, if it's drama, if it's music. Uh, certainly at Juilliard, those are the three, um, uh, the, the three departments that they, that, that they have there. Um, but I, I, f I found myself right where I felt like I belonged. It was sort of the beginning of my mom and dad and my family supporting me and going, we were right all these years. Uh, <laughs> look, you're exactly where you belong in this incredible institution that um, you know, ha has done so much for so many uh, artists over the years. Did you, so at Juilliard, you had well-rounded classes. You had to take music classes. You had to take some dance classes, right? Yes. Or correct. movement classes. Correct. Right? Yeah. So how did you fare in those? Uh, in the great. music and the dance classes? Great. Because I'm surprised that I, I know that your trajectory was to be an actor. Yes. But I'm surprised that you don't do a little singing, a little dancing, and mix it up a little bit. You know, it, 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 it's funny. Uh, um, we do have classes and all of that. And um, I, I may not consider myself much of a, a virtuoso in, in the singing department. But I do <laughs> I do love, you know, we do so much voice and speech training at Juilliard mm -hmm. that it opens you up no matter what to, to believe in your voice and to feel confident about, you know, being uh, enunciating and being understood. Uh, as far as carrying a tune, carrying a note, ear training, some people came in and they were just off the charts ready to record an album and you were like, wow, that person could have a career in musical theater tomorrow, let alone, you know, after the training. But we would all take singing classes I, and we would take movement classes and dance classes and I learned a lot about acting from watching dancers uh, perform on stage. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. I used to be a dancer, so uh -huh. that's why I asked. Because <laughs> I was like, hmm, I know you went to Juilliard. Mm -hmm. I know it's in New York. There's that's a lot right. of dances in yeah. New York. Let's see what's going yeah. on. So right after you came out of Juilliard, you landed on Guiding Light, right? Correct. And what was your part there? Was that it was, any, uh, um, th anything close to what uh, Peter is on GH? Uh, very different, very different. Uh, it was three months after graduation, and uh, I remember getting the the, the appointment. Uh, Rob Decina was the casting director, and uh, and I remember um, showing up and reading for him and being really excited at the idea that the character was an outdoorsman. I remember um, he was uh, a rock climber, and I was getting kicked out of boarding schools. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Paul Rausch was the executive producer, and he uh, had me read in front of him in his office. And uh, and I remember getting the job and thinking, you know, this is incredible. Now I get to learn about the camera uh, after spending ten years on stage from twelve to twenty-two. And so I looked at it as a as an opportunity to continue training and growing, and you know, maybe to be able to go out and buy a steak dinner to That's hilarious. New York for the first time. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. During the, uh, once you graduated Juilliard, was there a time when you thought, I'd like to pursue theater as, as my main drive? Or was it always like, ah, that's good to do, but I'd rather transition to film and television? Well, I was still living in New York City, and I figured I'd hit the ground running and see what came my way. Um, I was always told to take your risks when you're young, and, and I knew eventually it was inevitable I would end up in L.A. at some point. I just didn't know if it would be a job that would take me out there for the first time or, or not. Uh, I ended up, um, they were very gracious with me at, at uh, Guiding Light, and they uh, let me stay for uh, six month increments and they wanted to sign me up for uh, a big contract and I was so new and so young and had all these ideas of other things I wanted, of all these things I wanted to do, not necessarily other things because I really enjoyed the medium. Uh, so when I wouldn't commit, uh, they decided, you know, well then go do what you want to do. And so I left New York, that left the nice. show. Yeah, and I left, um, you know, a great show and uh, all my friends and a great city and went to California. I'd never been there before. And so it was a, a huge risk. Um, and uh, I don't take it lightly that all these years later with so, so many, so fewer uh, daytime shows that I get a chance now to see through the very beginning of my professional journey, which was daytime and fully committing to what it is that we do, you know, and giving it everything I have now as, a, as an adult. That brings me to my next question. Working in daytime is very different than working in episodic television yeah. or um, a movie of the week because the amount of pages that you get, especially if your storyline is on the front burner, yeah. is crazy. Is. How did you adapt to that type of schedule? I remember I, I interviewed Tika Sumter not too long ago uh, for the film she was in, The Old Man and the Gun, and I asked her if that helped her with the other things that she's doing now. Right. And she was like, she, she had me cracking up because she was like, 
I don't know how, she said, I don't understand how when people show up on a set and they got one page and they're like, I don't know if I can remember this. She's like, it is one page. <laughs> right. It is one page. Do you know how many pages I had to right. learn on One Life to Live? So right. I was just wondering what your thoughts are on that subject. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, daytime, I, I looked at it when I was young as a great training ground. I look at it now as just an incredible opportunity to uh, to work in, a, in, in an amazing medium of storytelling that's so unique. It, it doesn't exist this way in film. It doesn't exist this way. Um, in primetime television where you, you know, either of those you shoot maybe five pages, six pages in a 12-hour mm -hmm. day or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we'll shoot multiple shows in a day. And, and I didn't do that on Guiding Light. That's the one thing Laura told me. It's faster now than what you even remember from when you were younger. And I knew how fast it was to me then. And, um, and it reminds me of uh, the theater in the sense that the sets are all proscenium stages. And... Uh, and the cameras are always running, uh, so whatever you do, they're trying to pick up on it and, and grab it. Um, and oftentimes they take the rehearsals, right? Yeah, you know, uh, sometimes they will. If you know, if it's something um, you know relatively simple, uh, then to save time, we will. Um, but most of the time, not. And and I'm I'm glad about that because the rehearsal is the dress rehearsal is the one chance you have to try and take a crack at it without it being the finished product. So if you need to iron something out, um, make a mistake, uh, you know, get some notes from your director, ask a question about a line, um, shake off nerves, whatever it is, that's all stuff to do during the, the rehearsal, to go for it, and then they can either tone you down or ask for more, so that when we actually shoot it, that's um, pretty much as close as we're gonna get, considering the amount of time we have. What was the, what's the one day that you taped where you were just like, oh Lord, am I going to be able to, to knock this out the park today? <laughs> there was there was a day, I know exactly uh, when it was, Carla, there was a, a day when, in the spring, uh, in May, when I was, um, uh, uh, Peter was tied up to the, to the to bed. The bed. <laughs> to the bed. Actually, no, it was out of the bed and it was the, the beginning of the stable uh, before the fire. Okay. And, and because of the set and because of the situation with having to burn the set down and uh, that we only had a limited amount of time to shoot on that set. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I had to shoot five episodes in one day. Ouch. And Laura's been on the show 13 years, and she said, I've never done five in one day. I've done four. <laughs> I've never done five in one day. So I, and I asked for the scripts. Usually we get it a week ahead of time. I asked for it as early as I could, even if there were rough sketches. I just wanted to get to work on it. And uh, I had, you know, 77 pages of two-person scenes. So it was just me and one other person for, you know, all five episodes I had to do. It was a lot of material. So I really put on my, uh, you know, my professional cap and was like, look, this is that moment where I feel like I'm going to earn my stripes. If I can go in there and pull this off the way I believe I can, then, you know, um, then you'll feel like you've arrived in a way that you, you know, want to feel. Mm -hmm. uh, this is me talking to myself, you know, in the bathroom, <laughs> looking in the mirror and like, you can do it, man. You can do it. The crazy part is it went really, really well that day, and the next day I had to come back and shoot three more episodes. So it was oh. eight episodes in two days. Oh. <laughs> that was the week I felt like I earned my GH stripes. <laughs> um, I would say so. That's a lot going on. Yeah, and on top of it all, it was really emotional. It's not like we were just sitting around, you know. <laughs> At a campfire. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> chewing bubble gum and singing songs. It was all emotional and, you know, and monologues and dramatic and, you know, being tortured and all the pain and, you know, so it was a lot to bring to it. But. I have to say, we talk about you and your character, Peter, slash Heinrich on here all the time. Do you really? Oh, but we do. Wow. We talk about you all the time. Oh. We talk about your story <laughs> plots. We, we talk, imagine about, what kind we of talk about you as a person, <laughs> the person that we met before you walked into the studio today. But the thing that I've always been impressed with about you is that no matter what they give you for a storyline, you always knock it out of the park. It's uh, always really well acted. It's all I can tell that you've put a lot of thought and care and technique into what you do on screen. And I, as a fan of General Hospital and just as a fan of you and of soap operas, I appreciate that. So I'm you. glad I have the opportunity to tell you to oh, your face. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm glad for that, too. That feels really good to hear. I appreciate that. Thank You're you. welcome. Now, there uh, usually if uh, an actor on a soap gets those scenes where you, maybe you're in a hospital bed, you're in a coma or something like that, it's like, oh, that's easy day. I just got to lay there while everybody else does it. Right. But you had a sequence where you're trapped in the cabin, you're handcuffed, uh, Obrecht is uh, threatening to kill you. Yes, it's it's you're you're on your you're on your back, but it is not easy work. Right. Uh, it, it may have looked like I was just laying down on the job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, it is bizarre as as relieving as it was, or as 
in fun as it was to not have to write down any blocking for about three months uh, in the morning rehearsals, blocking rehearsals, because mm -hmm. I just knew I was going to be there. The, the, the crux of it was knowing that um, my movement is restricted. So, you know, if, if you feel something and you want to do something, you, you can't. It has to all just end up coming out of you, you know, from a standpoint of I'm restrained. Therefore, I can't express myself beyond what's happening here in my eyes, my face, and my, my voice. Uh, let's talk about probably the highlight of that uh, when you're restrained in the bed. Uh, and that's when the, uh, the snake appears. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. That was not cute. <laughs> That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I was it was fun. What's like when you read the script and you go, "Oh, there's going to be a snake on the bed." All right. The first, the first thought is, "How are they going to shoot this?" Yeah. You know, because are we going to sell this? Is it going to look good? Is it going to, you know, is it going to make people? Is it going to be seem like a joke? Um, but they actually had a real snake and a snake wrangler, and he brought in uh, three or four um, of those rattlesnakes that he had just caught in the wild three, <laughs> three or four days earlier. He said it's not like they were, you know. Uh, so they were, they were not happy to be there. <laughs> Uh, we all had to, of course, they stand far away yeah. in those moments. I was like, am I going to be on the bed with the poisonous uh, deadly snake? But no, they did a great job shooting around all that and getting the coverage they needed to, to make it look good. You I want to tell you, we and have I had a... I just scream and cry like a baby, and, uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, everyone would believe it was really happening. We have a chat room on this show oh, okay, on, cool. on YouTube, and oh, um, let me see who said this. Kenneth Clark says that you and Finola Hughes are great playing mother and son. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for that. I've, it's, it's, I feel so, so fortunate, grateful, blessed, lucky uh, that I have the opportunity to bring such a character uh, to life in Port Charles. You know, Anna Devane is, is such an iconic character on the show, and I remember watching her when I was a young boy and thinking her daughter Anna and I, uh, Robin, excuse me, Robin and mm -hmm. I are about um, the same age. And I remember thinking that as a kid, watching the TV and thinking, look at her do it. And going, wow, look at that. My mom was a fan even back then. And, um, and I remember watching it and thinking, uh, and those, those, those two characters stayed with me. Uh, Frisco and Felicia also stayed with me um, from the, the late 80s. And uh, all these years later to now be inter interwoven into the uh, lineage uh, of the family, uh, as it were, it's um it's a real honor. I'm I'm thrilled. And every time they write for Finola and I, we get really excited and we work on it together and we talk oh, that's about nice. it together. Yeah, we really love what we're doing and uh, we're hoping it it, it shows because we we care about it and we want to bring it to life uh, for all the fans uh, the best way we possibly can. That's cool. Uh, somebody else said that they love they've loved you since Charmed since you were on Charmed. Yes. So they went way back, huh? <laughs> Sure, sure. Uh, not as far back as Guiding Light, but um, <laughs> but it's certainly it's it's back there. It, it's back there. Uh, so Charm, that was a fun show. When uh, when you first uh, the uh, the idea of coming onto GH first comes across your path, how much about the role did you know going in? They kept it top secret. Uh, they they did uh, at first. I thought I was being asked to come in and read for uh, a small role for the producers, and I thought, you know, the producers will make a decision. You know, Frank Valentini and I know each other from many years ago in, in 2009. Uh, I screen tested for One Life to Live in New York for him, and we crossed paths then and we got along really well, and uh, he uh, told me that he had always wanted to work with me. I did not know that. Uh, back then, I did not know that all these years. Uh, in fact, and um, when the opportunity presented itself, I think he and I both just wanted to hit a home run and find a way to, to make it happen. Of course, um, that being said, the character developed into a much larger role with a lot more responsibility, and at that point, uh, ABC, Disney got involved, and it was going to have to be a, a screen test and uh, network approval, and I was going to have to beat out 10 other guys screen testing Ooh, and all no. that. So, yeah, okay, in wait, order, let's, in order let's, to even, let's just back that up for a second. secure the position there. Let's um, just back that yeah, up for okay. a second. So for people that, that don't know this, let's just talk about the fact that you were already on the show, right? You were already playing Peter, and no. they made you screen test? No, no, no. Okay. This, was, this was the initial, would you be interested in going back to daytime? Would you be interested in reading for the producers over at GH? And then they made you screen test. And I just finished a movie uh, that we'll talk about soon, and, I, and they asked me to come in and read for the producers, and at that point, um, I was thrilled at the opportunity of just, you know, maybe uh, doing a, a small arc or, you know, you never know, maybe having a recurring character or something like that. And it turned out to become a contract uh, role. And I did not know that. And then when they asked about the screen test situation, it became clear to me that this was going to be, you know, a lot bigger deal than what I originally thought. And then once I secured my spot there and even began working, my first episode I shot was October 
19th, so it was probably airing a year ago, like right now today, like <laughs> oh, the, wow. the very first Peter August uh, sighting in Port Charles, um, as the you know would-be COO of, of Aurora Media <laughs> yes. at the time. Um, and I remember my first scene was with Billy Miller. Uh, he was interviewing me for the mm-hmm. job. And, uh, you know, but at that time, I had no idea uh, was still why I was why I was there. It wasn't until uh, December, close to the holiday break, that I started to kind of um, feel, uh, you know, uncomfortable with not knowing what was happening. And I knew it had been kept for a reason. I just felt it was time they told me a little bit about what the reason was. And so I asked, and they had a, a meeting with me with uh, the writers and, and producers. And that way, I was able to go into the holiday break knowing what was coming for January, February. And it was a big deal when they told me the, the story and the background of the character and being uh, in the son of, of, of Faison. Uh, I, I then spent the entire holiday vacation uh, watching a uh, hundred YouTube clips of <laughs> Faison <laughs> and Anna Devane and, and watching you know the, the history of the show so I could do my research and figure out how am I going to to bring this to life in, in my own way and make this work. And of course, even at that time, there was no talk of me being the son of, of Anna Devane. That was even still top secret. Oh, wow. That didn't even come out until sometime earlier uh, this year. So when the producers and the, everybody decided to reveal that to you, that you're at least uh, uh, phase on son, son right. is that something that you're just like, keep this to yourself? Or if they tell you, they feel like, it's okay for the rest of the cast? <laughs> no, it was, it was uh, you're welcome to take notes here in the room, and you're welcome to come back and talk to us and ask any questions you want. But once you leave this room, you can never speak about what was just revealed <laughs> oh, to you. Oh, snap. Can not talk to anyone about anything. <laughs> And I have to respect that. You yeah. know what I mean, I mean, it's not like uh, you know they're making me sign NDAs or something. But um, I basically feel like that is my NDA. Like when they yes. tell me don't say <laughs> yeah. a word, it's like I'm signing my life away. You know, might as well, might as well be a contractual agreement then. Well, in the chat room again, they're saying stay away from Maxi. <laughs> Stay away, stay away from Rex. But on the flip side of it, they are saying Wes is fine, and I concur on that. He is. Oh. <laughs> and they said they want, and then somebody else said, I want Peter and Maxie to get together. So on that line, can can you break us off a little piece on what might happen with uh, Peter and Maxie? As if he's going to give us spoilers, Carl. I mean, Carla. he can give us like a little hinty hint. Like, he can tell us something that's not going to get him kicked to the curb at GH. Well, I'll tell you what, what I find intriguing about this storyline is that uh, you know, and this is something that everyone everyone knows, and it, it, it matters. Um, I think it matters greatly. Is that okay. uh, Peter's entire life he struggled with acceptance and and having a, and wanting to be loved and wanting to have a family um, and wanting to be able to share love. Um, and you know, growing up with a father who was tormenting and abusive, and you know, um, wanting to prove yourself to him. It, it really can mess up your head. And to find uh, yourself in a place where um, you can develop a real connection with, uh, with people, uh, whether it's you know, friendship with Maxi, feelings for Maxi. Um, the, the truth is that uh, baby James is directly related to Peter, and, and that's the only family he really feels he has left because he hasn't you know, um, accepted um, his mother or his half-sister uh, yet, and they haven't necessarily accepted him yet, but they're working on all that. In his mind, he sees baby James as the future of his own uh, his own um, family history, because he doesn't have anyone else at this point. So I think he's very protective of James as his nephew, and certainly of, of Maxie because of, you know, a variety of reasons. Mm-hmm. So I think because of that, it's, um, it's genuine, you know, it's honest, and there's some tenderness there. Um, depending on what happens uh, with that, um, you know, that's, that's certainly something that I'm excited to find out as well with the writers because, uh, believe it or not, we aren't told uh, as much as you may think we're told uh, in terms of what's happening down the road. <laughs> so do you get it, like, the night before you have to shoot it? No, we get it a week ahead. Oh, and, that's um, good. Yeah, and sometimes we'll learn what we're doing by getting that script. Uh, you know, maybe it's a week ahead, maybe it's three or four days ahead, depending on how many rewrites or how backed up they are. Um, and sometimes you can go upstairs and ask about the future story here or there so you have an idea of what's coming maybe in the weeks to come. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit about what's coming in the months to come mm-hmm. if you're really lucky. But for the most part, um, you are kind of learning it 
on the fly, which is also part of what's so exciting about daytime, is I really don't know what's happening after next week. <laughs> I, I really have <laughs> no idea. After the secrecy about finding out that you're a Faison son, when it yes. comes time to reveal that, oh, wait, you're really also Anna's son as well, do they tell you and Fanola at the same time? Or do they tell one of you first, and, you, and that person's also kind of keeping it to themselves? I, I, they, we were told individually. Okay. I don't know who was told first, but it was... Um, it was a it was a big deal, uh, certainly for me. Um, I think that she was told around the time of the screen tests, actually. Oh wow! That there was a, that there was a, an opportunity for um, for her to have a, a son, and I had no idea about that. Um, and certainly, I, it was revealed to me many months later. Uh, but I'm really proud of the work that that uh, Fanola and I were able to do together um, with that reveal. You know, um, I thought she was fantastic. It was very powerful. Uh, yeah, it really was. And with the stuff when it happens on the docks, and then when I'm locked up in the jail, and we're having those confrontational scenes where it's all coming out. There's so much pain and so much regret, and so much anger and betrayal, uh, and and uh, a feeling of not knowing what's real, you know, the deceit of it all, um, and the abandonment of it all. I mean, there's a it really, a, you know, inside, underneath all the anger and pain is, is a, a, a child with, I think, a broken heart, you know, um, who was abandoned and has never been able to be properly loved, um, you know, and not to, woe is me, oh, poor Peter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we do not but, feel sorry yeah, for Peter right, on show. Right, 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 <laughs> no, nor should we one, considering... Considering the um, the scars he's carried through being his father's son, it's turned him into quite a resilient, uh, durable uh, man who's capable, I think, of 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 surviving a great deal, and um, and also he's 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 very intelligent, you know. So it's not like you need to, to worry about whether or not he's going to make it or he'll be okay or not. He's he's quite a capable human being. Well, I do like the the, the scenes and the way you play it when uh, Anna does decide she's going to go after Obrecht. And everyone is telling Peter that she's doing this because she loves you and that she wants to make sure that you're safe. She knows as long as O breaks out there, that is a threat to you and she wants to take care of that. And the way you kind of play it where it just feels like that's, the, the, the door opens just a crack to uh-huh. like see like, uh, all right, maybe there's I should reevaluate what I think of her. Right. Here's someone wanting to care for me and that's all I've ever wanted. And so, uh, you know, Peter's trying to figure out, do I lower my guard yet? Uh, is it too soon? Too much too soon? Am I capable of being vulnerable to this person and ever trusting this person? Um, but, you know, I think that's part of what uh, GH is smart with their, their writing because I think it's very human to want to be on guard and to take baby steps when something so... Um, um, so powerful is at stake, you know. Instead of just jumping all in, it's like when you've been when you've been burned before, you're a little more leery about, you know, uh, how you step over the fire, you know. No, well, uh, speaking of looking for for love, uh, your new film, Perception. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, touring the festival circuit, circuit yes. going to be in theaters in 2019. Yes. yes, yes. yes. Uh, you play Daniel. A uh, uh, to what we know, uh, find out that uh, your wife is dead, and you uh, are going to be shutting down a, uh, a psychic. Uh, their their structure, you're going to be demolishing that, turning it over to other, uh, developing it, and find out that she says she's going to do a reading for you, one of the psychics that's in there, and mm-hmm. get you in touch with your supposed wife. Yes, it's um, it's a chance encounter between two very different people. Uh, Daniel, a successful real estate developer who is in the process of, of wrecking a, an old uh, strip mall, and one of the last businesses in the strip mall is a, a small psychic uh, house if you will, and um, he meets the character of, of Nina there, and uh, you know, uh, she offers him a reading, and it's not something he is looking for or expects, and certainly um, has no idea going into it that, you know, um, that it's that reading that's going to be the catalyst behind the rest of the story unfolding, which is that she channels and uh, puts him in touch with his, his dead wife, and uh, that is, um, has such an impact on Daniel that it becomes a question of if you've lost someone you love, how far are you willing to go to, you know, uh, to reconnect with them or to get them back or to understand them or to find them again or um, seek out whether it's uh, closure or reconciliation or uh, some kind of, um, you know, if you love someone, do you really have to say goodbye if, if, if an opportunity presents itself like that, you know? I know it's a powerful it, movie. <clears throat> I know that it just played at the downtown LA festival. Yes, DTLA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. on October 18th, I think it was. Yes. 
how was the reception to it there? It was great. It was great. The people there were very kind to us, and uh, and and everyone seemed uh, really pleased with the the final product. I had seen a rough cut, uh, but it had been probably almost a year. And I really like seeing the way they finished out the uh, the film. I thought the the quality of it was, and the story, t the way they cut it together, the um, the coloring, the music, the all of it, to finally see it sort of come to fruition was was really cool. Yeah. What made you accept that role in Perception? What made you want? What was the one defining factor that made you say, "I have to do this film"? It scared me. <laughs> it scared me. I, and the first film I ever did, uh, Latter Days, was a script that, that scared me because of how good it was. When I read the words and I read the story and saw, hey, if this really were brought to life the way I'm envisioning it, I really believe it could be a game changer. And uh, Latter Days did turn out to be that for me in my life. And this was one of the first times since then that I've read a script that really affected me uh, that deeply. And, um, and I was thrilled with the idea of, of bringing it to life. Uh, not to mention that I got to shoot in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, which is so yeah, very nice. Yeah, oh, that was cool. Bringing it all back home, yeah. That was really cool. Yeah. Did you get to do some press and reconnect with some people while you were home? No, it was actually, it was such a quick thing uh, that uh, very few people there even knew I was doing it. But I hope that it will be accepted into a film festival in Louisville and that I'll be able to go home then and have that, have that time and that moment with family and friends there. That's great. <laughs> I think I know, I, do you know, uh, Laura Bell Bundy? Yes, I do. That's my that good was... girlfriend from Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Well, yeah. see, Laura Bell and I, Laura Bell Bundy and I were, we were um, love interests on Guiding Light because she oh, played Mara. How did I not know? I didn't and even I... know she was on Guiding Light. Right. I just know her from, um, I know her from Broadway when Broadway. she was doing Legally Blonde. You know what? It was, it was uh, when, when we were on uh, Guiding Light, when she left Guiding Light, she was actually workshopping Hairspray, and that was her first Broadway show. Right. From then, she went on to keep doing, God, so many, and, mm -hmm. and she's done so well for herself. A fantastic actor. And, yeah, um, she's great. Yeah, and we uh, we got to, you know, I was, that was when I was, that first character we talked about, Sam Spencer, the, 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 uh, um, he was kicked out of the boarding schools, rode a motorcycle, and was a rock climber. He was a woodsman, yes. <laughs> yeah, he was a woodsman, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and she played, and, and Laura Bell Bunny played uh, Mara Lewis. That's so funny, because when you yeah. said, when, and the thing that jogged my memory of Laura Bell with Kentucky is when you said Louisville. Louisville, Because only yeah. people from Louisville yeah. will say Louisville. That's Everybody true. else says Louisville. That's true. I think, I think Laura's from Lexington. But certainly she, she from Kentucky. I got from that Kentucky. right. Yes, you did. Yes, <laughs> and we would talk about Louisville. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah, yeah I, I I love her. I love her very much. She's fantastic. Um, what other plans? What other uh, festivals is Perception scheduled to hit? that we know about right now? That's a good question. I don't know of any right now, uh, but I hope after um, meeting with Rob today and hearing that, that Brian has it submitted in several more right now that we're waiting to hear back from, that, uh, you know, that it'll be exciting through the holidays and on into to 2019. I know they hope to tour it through uh, as many as we can get into and then find distribution for sometime in 2019, I hope. Yeah, so for people that want to see the film or want to know what's happening with the film, you can go to www.perceptionmovie.com. Perception A Movie. A Perception A Movie, my yeah. bad, because I saw Perception <laughs> Movie. Perceptionamovie.com and find out more about the film, more about the characters, the cast, the crew, and where it may be playing next to you. What I do like about, uh, in the course of the film with uh, Daniel and Nina, is that there are several layers to both those characters that you find out, and motivations, and reasons what they're doing, what they're doing, kind of deepen and shift throughout the course of the film. Yes, uh, they do. She is very interested in helping him because she's struggling to feed her, her child as a single mom with a young child, a young boy. And so she's desperate for money, she's being evicted from this place, and here's this guy that actually has money and now has this... Um, you know, uh, desire uh, that could turn into an obsession about this dead ex-wife that she has connection to, and then what happens next? It's you know, how far are these two people willing to go for what they both want? You know, uh, you know, and uh, there is uh, some brief moments of uh, Wes Ramsey. You get to see a lot of Wes in this film. <laughs> yeah, you yes. do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, it's not the first time. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Let's be honest. There you go. That's okay. It worked for me. That's all that's I got to say about that. <laughs> Woo! It's Woo! hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're turning red. Look at you blushing. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Now, when you're working with a director, and for this one, it's uh, Elana Rain. Is that or Elana Rain? Elana Rain. Uh, uh, what was it? What was it like working with her? 
Oh, fantastic. You know, she was not only involved in, in the directing, but also in the writing of the script with, with Brian. And uh, when she uh, approached me about the, the movie, I had looked at some of the other work that she had done, and she's from New York, and um, uh, very creative, artistic uh, filmmaking. And uh, so based on what I saw from her previous work, I thought combining that with the script I just read that scared me, I thought this could be really, really cool um, to be involved in. And she's great. There were, there were moments on uh, set when, uh, you know, a lot of directors you think, uh, oh, a good director has to have been an actor. Not necessarily. Uh, there are a lot of directors that uh, understand the, the, how to take the temperature on set of what's going on. And she was very good at communicating with me uh, with very few words. And there were moments when she would almost have to say nothing at all, but could come up and just, you know, whisper a couple of things in my ear. And then we would go again, and it could uh, completely, you know, uh, transcend the the previous take to the point where exact that was exactly what we were looking for. And so I thought that was a real gift. I was really uh, pleased to be working with her in, in that respect because I feel like we were able to, to um, you know, strike gold. For you, when you do work with the director, do you uh, the relationship you have with the director? Do you want something consistent from every director you work with, or it just varies? In terms of the project and the director, in terms of how many, how much feedback or notes that you want. Oh, I think it, I think it varies, uh, for sure. I mean, look, if you know, if you're talking about a period piece where there's a lot of history involved, then you, you know, coming from the theater, we would have, you know, that's dramaturgy. You'd have to know everything about everything from the history of the time, and you know, do all the background work, and that's the actor's job to do the homework. But the director has to also be aware of, of you know, the not just manning the ship, but knowing what kind of story we're telling. So, for me, I love the collaboration of art, whether it's, um, you know, not knowing uh, on any given day who my next uh, co-star or cast member will be and what their energy will be like, what they'll bring, um, their intensity level or their intellect or their passion, whatever that is. And I feel the same way about uh, about the directors I get to work with, that um, I love working with all kinds of different directors. Who would you say is your favorite up to this point, your favorite director to work with up, to this, up until this point? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Christopher Nolan, I think, is one of the best directors uh, I've ever I've ever seen. Um, I think Clint Eastwood makes incredible films. Ron Howard makes incredible films. Uh, Spielberg, I watched the HBO documentary on him recently, yeah. and I was blown <laughs> away at his life story. Um, you know, the, yeah, that's those, a good those, are the, those are the greats. You know? Okay. Yeah. But how about the ones you've personally worked with? Oh, for me. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, my first movie I was mentioning, uh, Latter Days, C.J. Cox is a, is a fantastic director. And uh, he wrote that film um, after doing uh, Sweet Home Alabama, mm -hmm. which made a, a bunch of money. And he was allowed to, to, uh, to write this, this script that he, that he cared so much about. And um, it was a love story. Um, and you wonder, I think working with Alana may have been one of the first times since than that I've worked with a director who also is involved in writing the script because that's not that's not always always the case. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some directors I remember when we uh, shot the um, the Playboy Club uh, for for NBC. It was uh, a lot of money being spent on this incredible pilot. Um, you would think that the director has so much to do with the would be series, but when it gets picked up, you know he's nowhere to be found. He was just there to do that one you know that one uh, episode or the the pilot treat it like a little mini movie and then he's uh, moved on. He was fantastic. He's, he's directed all these Marvel movies since then and wow. he's seeing his name and I'm like, that's incredible. <laughs> you're like, um, can I get a, yeah. like, like, yeah. a gig? Can I get a gig? Game of Thrones and you know, all these, yeah. <laughs> but he was just there as our director. I remember asking him all these questions and he was like, I'm just directing this, I'm, you know. So some people are super invested in it. Mm -hmm. It's like their baby and then other people are brought in for their expertise. They know exactly how to run the ship and then they're moved on to the, you know, they move on to the next one. Uh, well, speaking of expertise, I know you've, uh, you know, Acting is your main passion, but as uh, you and, uh, and Carla were discussing, dan uh, movement and, and singing, and of course the nurses ball always comes around <laughs> right. every single year. Uh, the nurses ball. If they ever give you the nod to say, Wes, this time we're gonna have you sing, or, are you ready to seize that moment if it should have come your way? Well, sure. I'm, you know, I'm not opposed to, to giving anything a shot. You know, I, you know, and and like I said earlier, I'm also not opposed to embarrassing myself too, <laughs> for the sake of like you know cheap laughs. You know? I think I need to be an extra um, that day that Wes is doing the nurses ball. I right. Need, I think I need to be there. If they do a great job with that. It's they an do. incredible. It's my yeah, and I'm really impressed with everyone. Uh, that's not my forte. I would I would certainly venture to say. But uh, this last year, it was when all my storyline was unfolding, and obviously I was not even uh, remotely thought of in, in that 
that way. I was busy uh, backstage getting, uh, you know, uh, caught on the docks and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, being elusive in my tuxedo or whatever. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you know, who knows? This year, I've, I've heard um, every year it's different. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure it's only a matter of time. <laughs> <That's> right, right? <laughs> well, uh, you were speaking of contracts. Uh, and certainly, Guiding Light, you had a, a, an opportunity to sign a contract. They wanted to sign you for something longer. Yes. And you passed because you wanted to pursue other things. Yes. What's it like to now, but when you're offered a contract role in GH and you've had more life experience, you've gone on, you've accomplished some things that you may have wanted to do, and a contract is presented to you? How do you view it in that context? That's um, a good question. Like, it's a great question. Um, quite honestly, 100% a dream come true. It, it is every day I wake up, I feel grateful, I pinch myself, I feel like it's, um, uh, it puts so much in perspective for me uh, when I think about all the things I've done and all the places I've been and then I get to come back around kind of to the, the format of where it once began for me, but I get to see it through in a way, uh, bringing all my life experience with me uh, as an adult and um, it's very humbling because I, I love my job I love my cast I love I think the writers have been very kind to me and uh, and I'm, I'm certainly in it for for the long haul um, and and I knew that going into it so I'm glad that they uh, that they sensed that or, or heard that <laughs> You're from glad me they that agree I, with you <laughs> yes and that I was able to uh, you know um, secure my spot well, and certainly uh, perception, I guess, you know, as we said, talk about the uh, touring the film circuit, but you've also had a couple other films, too, that you've been working on as well. Yes. They're waiting for release, too. Uh, what are the other two films? The other two, uh, one is Last Seen in Idaho, and it actually has already been released. Uh, Amazon, iTunes, it's um, a really fun, um, dark, action noir thriller um, that we shot up in Washington State. And... Um, I had a had a blast doing it. Uh, Sean Christian from from Days of Our Lives oh, is in nice. it, and um, uh, Casper Van Dien from Starship Troopers is also. And I think he was also on One Life to Live. I think he was also a daytime guy. Mm -hmm. uh, we um, we shot this movie up there together, and it was fun. You know, uh, you get to carry a gun, uh, try and figure out who's good, who's bad. <laughs> uh, it's dark, it's violent, um, and and there was a lot of action, and I loved that about it. I loved being able to do all my own stunts, the fight choreography, the chase scenes, all of it. Um, that film, Last Scene in Idaho, is, is a lot of fun, very entertaining. It's already out. The other one is called Two Pictures. And I shot that in Seattle uh, just after Last Scene in Idaho. Um, actually met some of the people doing it on the first shoot. And uh, they invited me to come back up and participate. And it was a really, really great experience. It's um, a very different film. It's about the, live, uh, the life of two different people um, and how they're... How the, the two pictures are the two different characters, their lives, and how their lives interact um, throughout the course of the story of the film, and how they come to meet each other in the end. Um, my character is a, a, an alcoholic shipyard worker in Seattle who's gone through a bad breakup and is kind of losing, kind of going off the deep end a little bit, unraveling psychologically. So I grew a really big beard, not unlike the one we saw uh, after I was held captive. I had very long fingernails that were Ooh. full of a lot of dirt, and I was, uh, you know, working outdoors on these uh, ships on the, in the shipyard, and uh, doing a lot of welding, and um, smoking a lot of cigarettes. It was uh, it was a very interesting character to to play, and uh, yeah, don't try this at home, kids. You were, you were giving <laughs> us yeah. a Howard Hughes yeah, vibe. It was very, yes, it was very, yeah. It was psychologically uh, a fascinating uh, story to tell, and I got to go um, a lot deeper than I had previously on any other films, with the exception of Perception, which I have done since then. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel really fortunate that the last three films I've been able to make have all been uniquely different, but all very challenging and rewarding for me. I can imagine that's got to be the fun part of the process when you're given a script and you have a character to, to, to do that deep dive into that character. <laughs> Yeah, lose yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Daniel Day Lewis style, if you yeah. can. You, know? <laughs> you got to be careful though doing that because it's it's a, it's a lot. You it's know, it's hard to lot. come back from you, it. You have it's to know to how to. Off, yeah, yeah, you have to know how to. And, and after perception, I did have to take a, a break, um, personally. For uh, I think I thought it would take uh, two to three weeks for me to come back after that. I actually came back I think in half the time. It was about a week, week and a half. But there was certainly. Uh, a transition for me of, of letting that go and coming back to, you know, to, to um, home base, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I can thank a lot of really great training and the, the teachers I had at, at Juilliard and, and a lot of great friends and the life experience for helping me understand how to do that. You know, it's, you got you to gotta commit, but you got to know how after you could commit to, uh, you know, to, to know who you are 
and what you're about after the fact, you know, so you don't go off the deep end. And no, one ever, no one ever knows what the hell I'm having again. Like, what happened to that guy? He lost it after that one. He went so far, and people are still trying to figure out where he went. They're like, ooh, yeah. we might have to do yeah. jacket action on him. It's like, ooh, not sure what's going on. Right. As somebody with not a, an act, a big acting background, uh, when you want to try to get yourself out of that, that, that time, is it just going back and doing... <clears throat> Going to a favorite place to eat, uh, hang out with some friends, do something that uh, just kind of breaks the routine from what you've been doing for that period of time that you were filming? Yes, for me, but I had to graduate to that. I actually, at the beginning, needed to be completely alone. I had to be left completely alone because I couldn't jump right back into friends, family, uh, relationships, all that stuff. I, I actually was um, rattled, you know, and I had to spend some time... Um, you know, uh, working out, grabbing some endorphins, uh, reading, um, you know, sauna, steam room, sweating, things like that, going for some long hikes. The three S's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Getting some sun, some vitamin D, eating healthy. <laughs> you know, some things that really bring you back to life and mm -hmm. remind you, you know, who you are. And of course, yeah, I mean, having great relationships, good friendships. And then I was able to feel like I'm ready to socialize, you know. And then actually at that point, once I start socializing, because the first thing they want to ask is, about the experience and if you're not if you're still in the experience you shouldn't be talking about it as yeah. if you're not you know so I had to sort of clear my head and get myself out of that and then I could reflect on it from the outside and tell my friends yeah I went there <laughs> <laughs> but I'm back <laughs> and happy to see you all That's right. which I, I guess in one sense it's nice to have a little bit of gap between the actual production and then the promotion of the film it gives you that time to distance yourself yes. from it as well too so you're not yeah. just falling right back into the rabbit hole we see Wes slowly crawling under the table sure. <laughs> right. oh it's too soon I'm so sorry too soon <laughs> hiding too soon. out right. like a fugitive that's, that's right. funny <laughs> so uh, Wes uh, uh, of course we have perception coming up uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Check out as uh, perceptionamovie.com. Perceptionamovie.com. That's right. That's right. Uh, and if they want to figure out, uh, find out what else you're doing, uh, whether it's going to be on anything in General Hospital or other projects you might be taking on as well, what's the best place to find you on social media? Uh, well, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter is at Wes Ramsey. Uh, Instagram is at Wes underscore Ramsey. And uh, obviously, um, social media has become a huge part of, of the marketing of anyone that's interested in sharing their work. Um, I do have a, a Facebook fan page that I need to get back to. I sort of <laughs> alienated myself from it and I need to like reconnect with it because so much has been going on. Mm. And I even have a website that I need to rebuild because uh, westramsey.com, I had it uh, up for many years and was very excited and proud to share my work with it uh, using that. And um, recently it crashed and I have to find uh, <laughs> someone to help me with that. <laughs> and once I do, it will be up and running again and uh, one, certainly one of my favorite uh, ways to share my life with uh, people out there. Well, it's a nice sign that you're incredibly busy. You just haven't had the time. That's right. <laughs> Which is a, it's a good thing. That's right. Yeah. You yes. just need a little IT yeah. help. That's, That's all. right. That's I, yeah, I don't profess to be a web builder. <laughs> <laughs> and you so can't like, do everything. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, Wes may not, uh, he needs to get back to his Facebook fan page, but he does a lot of GH fan events. So uh, if you're a GH fan, make sure you check out those fan events. Wes may be coming to a city near you to hang out. That's right. And even Charmed, uh, I'm doing a Charmed fan event next year, 4th of July in London. Oh, yeah. Come oh, on. Nice. So, come yeah. on. So nice. if you're in London, 4th of July next year, you can come hang out with us. Need a personal yeah. assistant? Yeah. I got a suitcase. Right. I'm That's just right. saying. <laughs> Yes, Laura's very excited about this uh, yes, vacation. I'm sure, yes. <laughs> He's like, let me just reiterate, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for the special Tuesday edition of the GH Report. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, like us on Facebook, give us those five stars on iTunes, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. But if you want to stay in touch with either Carla and I after the show's over, Carla, where can they find you? You can find me across all social media platforms at The Curvy Critic. You can find me on Sundays at Black Hollywood Live for my film review show over there, Black Tomatoes. And of course, you can always find me here on Sundays at the GH GH Report, and on Mondays at the Dancing with the Stars after show. Oh, look at that. And follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Happy Go Jackie. Uh, once again, big thanks to Wes Ramsey for yes, taking the thank time. thank you so much for taking Coming time out. out. We appreciate thank it. Thank you guys. I just want to take a moment to say thank you, Frank Carla. You guys are awesome. Thanks for bringing me in here and making me feel welcome for my first time on After Buzz Yay. and the GH Woo. After Show. All this right. has been exciting and fun. Thank oh, you so awesome. much, guys. Appreciate right, it. Folks, we'll be back next, uh, this coming Sunday with another new episode of the GH Report right here on After Buzz TV. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup.
Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.